Hello again. Okay, this video follows on from episode 49 as I thought I'd show how you can use the puzzle handout in an online game. And for this example, I'll be using Roll20, as you can see, and I'll be starting from scratch with an empty map. So, the first thing you'll need to do is go to your art library and then hit the upload button and simply select the map from wherever it is that you've saved it on your hard drive. And if we give that a few seconds, it, it should pop up in the library. Anytime now. And there it is. Next, you'll need to make sure that you're on the map layer. So, there we go. And then, drag the map into the main window. But, as you can see, it's the wrong size. So, you'll need to right-click the image and choose the advanced option, followed by set dimensions. Then you can change the menu from pixels to units, and simply input values of 22 and 18, as the map itself is 22 squares wide by 18 squares high. And it should now align to the grid perfectly. Okay, next you'll need to upload all of the puzzle pieces in the same way, and then switch back to the token layer. And you can then add all of the pieces to the map, in the same way that you would add a PC or monster token. So, I'll speed this part up while I do just that. Right then, next you'll need to make it so that each token can be moved around by all of the players. And to do this, you can either click the cog icon of the token itself, or just double click the token in question. And this time, I'll cut to the part where I've done all of that. So, that's the last one done, and now the map is pretty much set up. Okay, now you'll just need to hit the little icon in the top corner to bring up the page toolbar, click on the cog icon of the map in question, and then enable one of the fog of war options, and I personally like to turn up the darkness, just a little bit. Right then, so everything is now hidden from the players, so I'll just go ahead and reveal the entrance passage over here, as that's where the encounter will begin, and there you go, that's the area that the players will be able to see. Okay, so I've gone ahead and added a couple of player tokens, and I'll do the usual thing of revealing the room as our brave adventurers enter the chamber. So, there you go, something like that. Then, when a player character examines the middle plinth, you can reveal the player handout on the left of the screen, so I'll do that now. Um, hang on a sec, let's try that again. Okay, so you can reveal the player handout on the left of the screen. That's better. And if a PC examines the left plinth, you can reveal the puzzle pieces that they find there. So just give me a second and I'll do that. And then do the same thing when the other plinth is investigated. So, once again, there we go. Then you can run the encounter however you like and all of the players should have full access to each of the puzzle pieces. So yeah, I think that's probably the best way of trying to replicate the puzzle if you're playing online. And if you want to pick up all of these images, then just check the video description, as there'll be a link to a post over on my Patreon page, where you can pick them up. And uh, don't worry, you don't need to be a patron to get them, they'll be freely available for everyone. So, that's it for this little bonus video. Um, I just thought that it might be nice to show how you can still use some of this stuff on a virtual tabletop, because, let's face it, it's probably how a lot of us have been getting our gaming fix in uh, for this past year or so. Anyway, as always, thanks for watching, uh, I hope you found this useful, and I'll see you next time.